and we're back on Weather Geeks, and I'm talking to Lee Orff, and I mean, I'm still catching my breath from some of that amazing uh, visualization that we just cool. saw. Uh, and so the obvious next question for me is, where do you go next with this? Right. We've got so much data to sift through, so we're going to be focusing on this particular simulation for quite a while, but we're already looking at the next simulations. We're going to try to simulate other environments. So we're looking at like Greensburg, Kansas, Tuscaloosa, the big outbreaks in 2011, maybe even Joplin, Missouri. Right. Those are the types of storms we'd like to try to you know, model those storms pretty faithfully so we can figure out what went, what went wrong and, you know, it, or what happened. Um, but in general, I think in order to sort of take this to the next level, we need more, faster supercomputers, more memory. Um, this brings us into the exascale part, of what we're calling exascale, the current supercomputers are petascale. It's going to be a real challenge to, you know, there's so much data and it becomes a real data problem. It's just a big data problem. It really you is. You the buzzword in this big data now, but modelers like yourself have been dealing with big data for decades. I've spent more time working with the data problem than I have working with the tornado problem, right. honestly. I spent, uh, you know, about a decade just sort of thinking about how to do this and testing things out on different supercomputers, seeing what worked well, and finding ways to get the data from the in, from the computer's memory to the hard drive in a, in a way that I could actually use it uh, easily after the fact, and also so it's really fast when you write the And data. a little Weather Geeks, uh, Weather Geeks tidbit for you, you may not realize that the first ever computer, ENIAC, many of its first functions were on weather modeling. So, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, the, the weather, is a, weather modeling computers are intimately tied, and you're hearing it today. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these types of... Uh, uh, systems, fluid dynamics, uh, cosmology, etc. They're all sort of solving the future state of things, and, and you, you need really powerful computers. Right, yeah, I mean, and, and what we just looked at in that last segment, you're really seeing fluid flow at a very fine scale. And it looked like you're doing pretty good, but w in terms of physical processes, uh, do we need to better represent frictional processes, yeah. moisture processes? I mean, what's sort of your holy grail? To sure. Really to the next? I would love to put trees and houses in this Yeah, model. you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, right? I mean, we're getting to the point where the resolution is going to be high enough that we're almost going to have to do that in right. order to capture the surface right. So we, so we can certainly... Uh, improve our treatment of the surface. We can improve the way that we handle clouds and precipitation. That's always a tough one because real clouds have real hailstones and tons of raindrops and we don't. We I mean our models have a representation of how much stuff is in each grid volume but not it's not falling like a real raindrop. Um, there's also we need better observations. You know we need we need better stronger satellites to capture the real atmosphere better so that we can make our models better. Yeah we you know at a time where they're talk of cuts to satellite systems, we certainly know that satellites benefit us for sort of a now casting standpoint, but also models and also research. So Absolutely. We definitely want to get that in because this is uncertain times that we need those satellites and we need the continuous satellite record. I, I, I agree completely. Yeah, and so I know you can, I can say that, you don't have to say it. Uh, is there a location where people can go and look at these simulations? Sure. I, I post all my talks and such online, uh, orf.media is the okay. website real easy to, to go to. You can go there and I, I put all my, my talks and you can look at these videos for almost hours and hours. And we've been talking about tornadoes, but in the last minute or so, can this be applied to things like derechos Absolutely. or hurricane environments that sure. spin up tornadoes? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, there's some very good work being done at very high resolution uh, hurricane modeling. Um, and you can certainly, if you can get the computing power and get the model and get the initial conditions right, you can do amazing things with these models. One last question. Is something like this ever going to be operational? Will it be in an AWIPS in a National Weather Service office one day? Or where do you see that happening? I would like to see us get to the point where the simulation I just showed you is one of a series in an ensemble. So we have like dozens of those simulations going ahead of time, catching before the storm occurs, giving us a probabilistic spread of what we might expect. I hope to see that in the next 20, 30 years. And I, I think we will. I think as long as we can.